Remember that time when James Bond was shot, and as a result his body was poisoned? Well, that bullet that the infamous 007 was hit with was actually a uranium bullet. Now that scene was not far-fetched as uranium bullets do exist and are used in real life. But what would actually happen if you were hit by one or even exposed to it? Now, you're definitely not going to turn into a superhero or anything, but we highly recommend steering clear of any uranium-based ammunition on the battlefield. In all cases, it's not going to end up well for you. But what exactly are uranium ammunitions? They're not the gamma ray prototype that you probably imagine it is, but let us look at what they really are. Uranium possesses formidable capabilities, not only in the realm of radiation and nuclear energy, but also as a highly potent blunt force. In simple terms, the destructive potential of this material is not squandered on something as small as a bullet fired from a pistol or rifle. First of all, it is not actual uranium as you know it. It is somewhat of a modified form named depleted uranium, sometimes referred to as DU. Depleted uranium is naturally occurring, uranium that has been stripped of much of its radioactive matter. Specifically, it contains a considerably lower concentration of the isotope uranium-235, which is essentially what makes uranium uranium. Uranium-235 is what empowers uranium to serve as a potent weapon or fuel due to its radioactive properties. While normal uranium has around 75% of uranium-235, depleted uranium only has 3%. Depleted uranium possesses a remarkable density of 19.1 grams per cubic centimeter, ranking it as the seventh densest material on Earth. This exceptional density renders it highly suitable for use in high-velocity armor-piercing projectiles. When compared to conventional metal projectiles, depleted uranium offers a significant advantage in terms of impact and velocity. While metal projectiles tend to flatten upon impact and collapse inward, depleted uranium retains its structural integrity and pierces through objects. Its dense composition allows it to be incorporated into the tips of tank shells, bullets, or mortar rounds, thereby enhancing their penetration capabilities. During flight and upon impact, uranium self-sharpens, enabling it to effortlessly penetrate various targets and inflict substantial damage. Additionally, depleted uranium is pyrophoric, meaning it spontaneously ignites when exposed to air or upon impact. This ignition can lead to the explosion of fuel tanks or the internal components of a tank, propelling fragments of broken armor as shrapnel toward unsuspecting occupants. Furthermore, its use in combat extends to fortifying and reinforcing tank armor due to uranium's exceptional durability. Essentially, depleted uranium serves as a means of countering the overwhelming offensive potential it possesses. Fighting fire with fire in a way, one of the major advantages of depleted uranium is its abundant availability in the United States. As a byproduct of nuclear reactors and bomb testing conducted over several decades, the U.S. possesses around 700,000 metric tons as a byproduct of nuclear reactors and bomb testing over the decades, all of which are stored and constantly monitored by the federal government. Therefore, utilizing depleted uranium in weapons becomes a win-win situation. It allows the government to make use of the existing surplus, free up valuable storage space, and benefit from its cost-effectiveness due to its abundance. In terms of practical application, depleted uranium finds widespread use in cannon fire and tank shells. Perhaps its most renowned application is in the G8 Avenger rotary cannon carried by the Fairchild Republic A-10 aircraft. A wonder of a jet and a wonder of a weapon. Still, with all these positive attributes, there are some fears regarding the use of depleted uranium, the main factor being that shells or rounds will land on the ground and contaminate the soil. It is not the magic bullet that people think it is, and it does have long-term toxic effects. The initial deployment of depleted uranium as a weapon occurred during the Gulf War in 1990 and 1991. In a remarkably short span of six months, the United States fired approximately 350 tons of depleted uranium ammunition. This extensive usage led to the emergence of a new term known as the Gulf War Syndrome. This syndrome encompasses a cluster of chronic symptoms, including fatigue, muscle pain, insomnia, and impaired cognition, which affected an estimated 250,000 U.S. veterans who were exposed to depleted uranium during the conflict. The consequences of depleted uranium contamination have been a cause for concern in various conflicts. During the 1999 Kosovo War, 
British biologists asserted that DU contamination could potentially result in an additional 10,000 cancer-related deaths in Serbia. In more recent events, such as the Fallujah massacres in Iraq, depleted uranium has been implicated in a significant increase in cases of leukemia, liver and kidney diseases, miscarriages, and birth defects. Experts explain that the uranium rounds used by the U.S. military leave behind traces and dust particles that can enter the food chain and human body. These contaminants can be ingested through contaminated food or become airborne during sand and dust storms, which are frequent occurrences in Iraq. Disturbing statistics from Fallujah reveal the gravity of the situation. By 2010, the rate of heart defects in the city had risen to 13 times that of Europe. One doctor single-handedly logged 699 cases of severe birth defects, including infants born with multiple limbs or multiple heads. The cancer rate soared 40 times between 1991 and 2005. It went from 40 cases per 100,000 people to an alarming 1,600. In its most extreme comparison, Iraqi health officials described DU contamination in Iraq as being equal to 100 Chernobyls. However, it is imperative to examine whether these alarming statistics definitively prove the inherent danger of DU. Is there a direct correlation between the usage of DU and the surge in illnesses? It may seem that way at first glance, but just as there is evidence supporting this claim, there are arguments that counter it as well. The International Atomic Energy Authority says that depleted uranium has chemical and radioactive toxicity, but let us look at the facts. DU is only around 60% as radioactive as normal uranium. It emits alpha radiation, which cannot penetrate human skin. Mostly, it is harmless outside the body, but if it does enter, it does cause severe genetic damage and leads to cancer. Considering DU's extraordinarily long half-life of 4.5 billion years, one would expect significant traces of DU in areas where it has been used. Surprisingly, recent studies have revealed no detectable amounts of DU in Fallujah. Moreover, there is a lack of direct evidence linking DU exposure to the observed illnesses. In fact, studies have even shown that soldiers who were exposed to DU shared similar health statistics to those who were not exposed. Nevertheless, the absence of a direct correlation between DU and the reported deformities and alarming cancer rates in Fallujah remains somewhat baffling, given that such deformities can only be the result of radiation. The topic remains highly controversial to this day. In recent times, there has been a resurgence in the use of DU bullets, despite military forces around the world previously abandoning them due to potential environmental risks. In the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict, Ukrainian forces supported by supplies from the U.S. and the U.K., have employed DU ammunition against Russian forces. The United States plans to provide Ukraine with 120mm DU tank rounds to be used in conjunction with the M1 Abrams tanks, which they will be gifting to the Ukrainian military. Similarly, the U.K. has already supplied DU shells to Ukraine to match the Challenger 2 tanks it has sent. It is important to note that DU ammunition is not classified as a nuclear weapon, and there are no specific treaties that explicitly prohibit its use. However, the use of DU remains controversial, and numerous organizations advocate for a ban on all uranium-based weaponry. Putin has responded to the United States' supply of DU as inhumane and added that Moscow would respond accordingly to what he views as weapons with a nuclear component. What do you mean by that? Could we be seeing the return of the Tsar? What are your thoughts on depleted uranium weaponry? And finally, if you made it this far, make sure to like and subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Leave a comment about what we should discuss next. See you in the next one.